Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will dive into the world of Grafana with a series of uh, scenario based uh, interview questions that you can expect as part of your DevOps interview. Now whether you are getting up for a job interview or you are just looking to expand your expertise, this video is just for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question we have is you have been tasked with uh, optimizing a Grafana dashboard that is experiencing so slow uh, loading times. How would you approach diagnosing and resolving the performance issues? So for this, we can begin with analyzing the dashboard's uh, queries and uh, visualizations to identify if there are any insufficient queries or any uh, uh, panels which are utilizing more resources that is your resource intensive panels then we we will begin with optimizing the queries by reducing the time range uh, limiting the number of data points that needs to be queried um, optimizing the database indexes and then additionally, we can also review the dashboard layout, considering consolidating the panels or making use of caching mechanisms to improve the overall performance. So this way we can uh, help improve the um, overall performance of the uh, Grafana dashboards. The next question we have is a critical metric in your monitoring system has exp exceeded a predefined threshold triggering an alert, how would you configure Grafana to send notifications to the appropriate um, uh, stakeholders? So for this, we can uh, implement alerting rules uh, in Grafana, which will help us to monitor the uh, relevant metrics, could be your uh, CPU, could be your RAM, any, any metric that you want. And then we can also define conditions when the alerts needs to be triggered. Like for example, if it's your uh, CPU utilization, then it should trigger when the metric is at 90 percent. You can you can define that. We can also specify the notification channel. So how do you want to send out the notification? So you want to send out an email notification or a notification over Slack or a notification using PagerDuty. And then we can configure the alert notifications to send out the notifications to any of these appropriate uh, recipients. Additionally, we can also set up alert annotations on the dashboards, uh, which will help us to provide context and visibility into the active alerts as to, you know, when the alerts are happening, uh, visibility into those alerts. The next question we have is, uh, you need to integrate a new data source into Grafana to visualize metrics from an external monitoring system. How would you configure Grafana to fetch data from this external data source? So for this, we will need to uh, install and configure the appropriate uh, uh, data source plugin that we want to integrate with Grafana and then connect our Grafana to this external monitoring system. So we'll need to provide the address, the authentications and all that information. So we'll need to specify the connection details to this external monitoring system. It could be the endpoint of the monitoring system, the authentication credentials, the uh, query parameters that we want to query. Once the data source has been configured, we can start with creating the dashboards and panels to basically visualize the metrics which is retrieved from this external uh, data source. The next question we have is your organization requires a highly available Grafana deployment to ensure uninterrupted access to the monitoring dashboards. How would you design and implement a high availability setup for Grafana? So for this, we can uh, simply deploy multiple instances of our Grafana and then we can have these multiple instances behind a load balancer, which will help us to distribute the traffic and also ensure we have redundancy with our Grafana instances. Um, then we can configure session affinity, which will help us to maintain the user sessions across the Grafana instances. We can also make use of shared storage for storing the session data and the configurations of the dashboard. Additionally, we can also set up database replication and clustering, which will help us to ensure data consistency and fault tolerance. So basically having multiple instances of your Grafana, uh, that way the traffic will be handled by making use of your load balances. The next question we have is users are experiencing issues accessing Grafana dashboards embedded in external uh, websites due to cross origin resource sharing restrictions. How would you configure Grafana to allow cross origin requests? 
So for this, we can configure Grafana's course settings. So course is cross origin resource sharing. We can configure this within Grafana settings and this will allow requests from specific domains or origins using the allow underscore origin configure option. So we have this option in the Grafana settings. We can utilize that. We can also specify the domains or origins that are permitted to access the Grafana resources and this will ensure that any cross origin requests that are, that are coming to Grafana are allowed without compromising the overall security itself. So we'll need to basically allow all that within Grafana settings. Uh, that way Grafana will start processing those uh, requests. The next question we have is your organization needs to define data retention policies for Grafana to manage the storage costs and also comply with regulatory requirements. How would you configure data retention policies in Grafana? So for this, we can configure data retention policies within the Grafana. So we can specify how long the metric data should be retained before automatically deleting or archiving the uh, metric data. We can also define the retention policies based on the business requirements. So maybe as per the business requirements, we want to keep the metric data for one year. So after that, we can uh, delete the data or we can archive the data. So based on the business requirements, based on compliance regula regulations and also based on the storage capacity constraints. So how much of storage uh, we can utilize. All right. So additionally, we can also implement data pruning mechanisms, which will help us to regularly clean up any expired data and also optimize the storage utilization. So automatically deleting the data from the storage that will also help us to optimize our storage costs and only maintain the data that is needed. The next question we have is your organization uses LDAP for centralized user authentication. How would you configure Grafana to authenticate users against an LDAP directory? So for this Grafana supports LDAP authentication. So we can configure Grafana's LDAP authentication settings, which will allow Grafana to connect to uh, LDAP directory and then authenticate the users using their existing LDAP credentials. All right. So we can when we are configuring this LDAP settings, we will need to specify the LDAP server address, uh, bind DN and also the search user base for querying the user information. So we need to provide cert certain information and then uh, Grafana will be able to use those existing credentials to authenticate and log into your Grafana instances. Additionally, we can also map LDAP attributes to Grafana user properties, which will help us to synchronize the user accounts as well as the permissions of those users. So it, the, the integration is possible. Grafana supports your LDAP authentication. The next question we have is you need to create a dynamic Grafana dashboard that allows users to select different time ranges and filter data based on specific criteria. How would you implement dashboard templating in Grafana? So for this, we can make use of Grafana's dashboard templating feature, uh, which is simply defining variables. So with this variables, users can interact with the dashboard content dynamically. All right. So making use of the variables. So we can create template variables for the time ranges. We can create the variables for your filters or any other parameters that are required and then bind them to the query parameters or uh, panel up options. This will allow users to customize the dashboard view based on the requirements. So basically defining variables for everything that is needed and that allows the users to customize whatever they want. The next question we have is your organization requires a custom visualization plugin for Grafana to display proprietary data sources. How would you develop and integrate a custom plugin into Grafana? So for this, we will need to develop a custom visualization plugin using uh, Grafana's uh, plugin development framework and library. So within the plugin, we can implement the desired visualization logic. Uh, it could be your data fetching, rendering, interaction handlings, all those things. Once the plugin is developed, we can package the plugin uh, as a Grafana uh, plugin and then install it onto the Grafana instance. And then users can start using this custom visualization plugin to visualize the data from proprietary sources. So basically, we will need to develop a custom plugin with all the logic that we need. And then we can start using that plugin within the Grafana instance to visualize the data. The next question we have is you need to share Grafana dashboards with external stakeholders who do not have access to the Grafana instance. How would you share and embed Grafana dashboards in external websites or portals? 
So for this, Grafana has a feature called dashboard sharing feature and also embedded features, uh, which allows us to generate shareable links or generate embed codes for the dashboards that uh, we want to share. So we can configure access permissions to specify whether users can only view these dashboards or also they can edit the uh, dashboards. Once we have the shareable links or the embedded codes, users can use uh, uh, the, the generated link to access the shared dashboard or by making use of the embedded code into their external websites or portals, they can start accessing the dashboards that we are sharing. The next question we have is you need to configure advanced alerting rules in Grafana to detect complex patterns or anomalies in metric data. How would you define and configure advanced alerting rules? So for this, we can make use of Grafana's advanced alerting features such as um, alerting thresholds, anomaly detections and complex query uh, conditions. And this will allow us to define alerting rules that will de detect certain patterns or anomalies within the metric data. Then we can configure alerting conditions based on this analysis, the statistical analysis or trend detection or uh, machine learning algorithms to trigger alerts when predefined criteria are met. So basically uh, looking at any anomalies, looking at the alerting thresholds, complex query conditions, we can um, uh, trigger alerts. The next question we have is your team needs to add custom annotations to Grafana dashboards to mark important events or changes. How would you create and manage custom annotations in Grafana? So for this, we can make use of Grafana's custom annotation feature, which allows us to add uh, annotations to dashboards, uh, which uh, are also specifying relevant metadata. So this metadata can be event timestamps, descriptions and uh, tags. We can create these uh, annotations either manually or programmatically. So if you're doing it via programmatically, we can make use of Grafana's HTTP API or external data sources. So the whole point of annotations is that it provides us with valuable context and visibility into the events or changes that impacts the monitoring and analysis. So basically, you know, get, give, getting a better view as to uh, when an event took place, when an um, uh, issue took place, annotations gets a, gives us a better visualization. The next question we have is, your organization uses Grafana to visualize metrics from remote data sources, which are located in different geographical regions. How would you configure Grafana to fetch data from remote data sources efficiently? So for this, we can make use of Grafana's data source settings, which will help us to optimize the data retrieval and also minimize the latency when we are fetching the data from remote data sources. So this may involve uh, deploying the Grafana instances closer to the remote data sources, um, leveraging caching mechanisms, um, optimizing the network routes to reduce the data transfer time. So one is uh, we, can, we can deploy the Grafana instances closer to the remote data sources so that way the, uh, the the network performance will be much better. We can also implement caching mechanisms, optimizing the network routes. Additionally, we can monitor and analyze the data retrieval performance, which will help us to identify and address any bottlenecks or any latency issue. So um, uh, also keep monitoring it to see whether it is addressing the issue or if not, then what's the issue where it is happening and start uh, addressing those issues. The next question we have is our organization requires gra granular access control for Grafana to enforce security policies and restrict access to sensitive data. How would you configure role-based access control, also known as RBAC in Grafana? So for this, we can configure Grafana's RBAC settings, which, which will allow us to define the roles and permissions for uh, users and groups. Then we can assign these roles to the users based on their responsibilities and based on the uh, access requirements that they need. This will allow us to control the access to uh, the data sources, dashboards, folders and organization settings. So RBACs, also known as role-based access control, enables the organizations to enforce all the necessary security policies and also ensures that the compliance with data privacy regulations are in place. So 
RBAC allows us to give the granular permissions, only the necessary permissions, uh, so that we have all the uh, data privacy regulations, uh, security policies, compliance, everything in place. The next question we have is you need to visualize data from uh, multiple data sources in a single Grafana dashboard to correlate the metrics and then analyze trends. How would you perform cross data source queries in Grafana? So for this, we can make use of Grafana's cross data source querying feature, which allows us to fetch and merge data from multiple data sources into one single query. So we can uh, basically um, get the data from multiple sources, but then have it in one single query. Uh, we can also configure data source overrides to specify which data sources to query and how to merge the results. And this will allow users to create a unified dashboards that combines data from multiple data sources for comprehensive monitoring and analysis. So Grafana has this cross data source querying feature which can be used to uh, query uh, uh, data from multiple data sources. And that brings us to the end of our scenario based Grafana interview questions. I hope you found this video insightful and valuable for your interview preparation or your learning journey. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.